Throughout Ash Ketchum's journey, he's encountered countless rare and powerful legendary Pokemon. Like many fans, I've often wondered what it'd be like if Ash caught some of these awesome creatures. So in this video, I'll be going over which legendary Pokemon fit Ash the best, selecting one for each of the 18 Pokemon types, and then using those picks to assemble his ultimate legendary Pokemon team. Starting off, we have the Psychic, Poison, and Steel types, as they're the easiest to cover. Why? Because these are the legendary Pokemon Ash actually owned. Solgaleo, Naganoddle, and Melmetal. And yes, I'm including both Mythicals and Ultra Beasts on this list, even though Naganoddle is going to be the only Ultra Beast, so does it really matter? The Sun and Moon anime was truly peak, for giving Ash not just his first legendary, but three of them. First, we have Solgaleo, who started out as a Cosmog under Ash's care. In the games, Lily is the one who bonds with Cosmog, but I love how the anime switches things up, letting Ash form a stronger bond with Solgaleo. Not only was it cool seeing Ash interact with such a powerful Pokemon, but it also showed his nurturing side when it was a Cosmog, which made their connection feel more personal. After Solgaleo left, however, Poipul stepped in, a playful and mischievous Pokemon who fit perfectly into Ash's Alolan family. Even though Poipul eventually left as well, wow, a lot of these legendaries just keep leaving him, huh? He returned as a Naganoddle to assist Ash in one of his biggest battles against Professor Kakui. And then there's Melmetal, the legendary that actually stuck around. Oh wow, would you look at that. Much like in Pokemon Go, Meltan had a mysterious introduction, and soon became part of Ash's team. Inspired by Rowlet, Meltan's eventual evolution into Melmetal felt like a huge moment, especially since it played a role in the Alola League. Now, although these picks are obvious, um, spoilers, not all of them are gonna make it to the ultimate team. So, let's get into what you really came here for, the legendaries Ash didn't catch, but totally could've. Best normal type for Ash is Meloetta. During his time in Unova, Ash befriended Meloetta, leading to her following him through his journey. This was the first time a legendary or mythical Pokemon actually traveled with Ash for an extended period. Their bond was unique. Meloetta often used her singing abilities to help Ash and his friends, and it felt like she was truly a part of his team. Unfortunately, they wrote her out by making her need to return to the forest village where she came from, despite it being very clear that she was much happier with Ash. Best fire type for Ash is Victini. Continuing with Ash's Unova journey, Victini is another good example of a Pokemon that formed a strong connection with Ash. During the events of the 14th Pokemon movie, Ash met Victini in the Kingdom of the Veil. Similar to Meloetta, this was another wholesome friendship. Victini's tragic backstory of being stuck in the purgatory that is the Veil for hundreds of years made Ash's efforts to free him even more emotional. Ash even fulfilled Victini's wish to see the ocean, showing the depth of their bond. Too bad once he did, Victini was kinda through with him and just dipped out. Best water type for Ash is Suicune. Suicune is one of those Pokemon that Ash had multiple encounters with throughout the series. The most iconic moment was probably during Pokemon Forever, when Ash teamed up with Suicune to save Celebi and stop the evil tree mech from destroying the forest. Yes, that's a real sentence. This, along with Ash's earlier encounter with Suicune in the beginning of Johto, makes it clear that Suicune and Ash make a perfect match. Suicune's noble and protective nature aligns well with Ash's values, and it's unfortunate that Go ended up catching it instead. Remember how mad you seen got at Ash for just seeing Suicune? I can only imagine how you must be feeling about Go right now. Best grass type for Ash is Celebi. Now speaking of Pokemon Forever, Ash's connection with Celebi spans multiple appearances, starting with this movie. Both him and Sam formed a strong friendship with Celebi, that honestly, either one of them could have ended up catching. That wasn't the only time Celebi crossed paths with Ash though. From the Celebi he saved during the Battle Frontier, to the one that sent him back in time to inspire Professor Kakui, Celebi and Ash just seemed to gravitate towards each other. That last one especially is kinda wild, cause Celebi is literally responsible for creating the league that Ash ended up winning. So just for that, it deserves to be an Ash Pokemon. Does it make the ultimate team though? Let's continue to find out. Now since I mentioned the Alola League, best electric type for Ash is Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko, the guardian of Mele Mele Island, played a significant role in Ash's Alola journey. From the moment Ash arrived in Alola, Tabu Koko kept its eyes on him, gifting him a Z-Ring and eventually challenging him to an epic battle at the Alola League. The bond they formed through these battles was clear, and by the end of the series, it was obvious that Tabu Koko had immense respect for Ash's growth as a trainer. It's not far-fetched to imagine Tabu Koko choosing to stay by Ash's side, especially considering how it battled under Professor Kukui's command. So if anyone else could tame Tabu Koko, it's definitely Ash. Honorable mention for Electric is Zekrom, since Ash was clearly meant to follow the hero role of the games to parallel ends Reshiram. Too bad Best Wishes kinda butchered that. So Zekrom will have to live on as Kyurem Black for Ash's Ice-type Legendary. Honestly, none of the other Ice-type Legendaries really fit Ash, so that's why I went with this choice. And you might be wondering why I didn't put Zekrom as the Dragon option, but that spot is reserved for a much more fitting Legendary. 
Best dragon type for Ash is Latias and Latios. That's right, I'm going with both. Fans have been clamoring for Ash to catch Latias since the fifth Pokemon movie, where they shared an unforgettable bond. Ash's friendship with Latias was one of the strongest legendary connections he's formed. No, 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 not like that! And their teamwork to save Latios was the highlight of the film. The two Pokemon showed their admiration for Ash by helping him throughout the movie, and their return appearances in the Hoopa Clash of Ages movie only further proved how natural this duo is with Ash. Seeing Ash ride Omega Latios was a dream come true, and is literally the only good thing about this stupid movie. But that's a topic for another video. <coughs> Pokemon Journeys would then continue this Lottie trend by having Ash befriend another Latias during Aim to Be a Midmaster. This is one of the biggest missed opportunities of Pokemon Journeys, because imagine how crazy it would have been to end Ash's journey by having him catch Latias. But they didn't. They even had Ash battle with Latios, reminding us yet again of how well this works, only for him to still hate humans and take Latias with him. I hate it here. Alright, let's calm down a bit with some rapid fire legendaries. Best Dark type for Ash is Zarude. I'm gonna be honest, I still haven't seen Secrets of the Jungle yet. I promise I will. But I still think Zarude fits him. Ash can be a little monkey boy sometimes, so it just works perfectly. Best Bug type for Ash is Genesect. These two don't really look that good together, but Ash did befriend one in the 16th movie. Also, it's literally the only choice. It was either a Genesect or Arceus Bug. I don't really like the Ultra Beast. Best Rock type for Ash is none of them. These guys suck. Regirock belongs to Brandon, Diancy formed a greater connection with Bonnie, and Terrakion is just no. So my pick is gonna be Ogre Pond with the Cornerstone Mask, which is technically a Rock type. Now, Ogre Pond does fit Ash really well, and if he ever went on a Paldean journey, he'd kinda have to have one for the Kirin storyline to work. Hmm, that'd make for a pretty good series. And since we're talking about a hypothetical Scarlet and Violet anime, best fighting type for Ash is Koridon. Though Kung Fu and Urshifu are great fighting types that fit Ash's personality, I still have Koridon as my top pick. If Ash ever traveled to Paldea, I can totally imagine him forming a bond with Koridon, mirroring how the player character bonds with it in the games. Koridon's friendly and wild nature would mesh perfectly with Ash's adventurous spirit, and the idea of them sharing sandwiches together during their journey is just too wholesome. Which makes the fact that we didn't get a Scarlet and Violet series all the more sadder. Best Ghost type for Ash is Giratina. Longtime Pokemon fans will remember the infamous moment in the 12th movie where Ash literally yells at the legendary Giratina to stop fighting. STOP FIGHTING! And would you believe it, it actually worked. This was due to their encounter in the 11th movie, where Ash was able to get on Giratina's good side for, um, for stopping the reverse world from, uh, from getting destroyed or something? I, I don't really remember, that movie was boring. Best ground type for Ash is Groudon. The first reason being, Groudon looks cool. Well, the second reason is the fact that after Pikachu absorbed the blue orb and turned evil, it was under the control of Groudon. Or he was trying to help Groudon? I don't really remember, that episode was boring. Point is, Pikachu and Groudon were buddies for a moment, so he could also be buddies with Ash. Best fairy type for Ash is Zacian. Seeing as how Ash used the Rusted Sword during the Darkest Day, and Zacian came to his aid because of it, it's only fitting that Ash catch Zacian, which would complement Gozamazenta. Oh, that capture didn't happen. Damn it, Journeys. Well, that's why I did it in my Sword and Shield anime series. Not only is Zacian just awesome, but its regal and protective demeanor complements Ash's role as a hero, making it a perfect fit. And lastly, best flying type for Ash is Ho-Oh. There's no better way to end off this list than with Ho-Oh, the legendary Pokemon that's been there since the very beginning of Ash's journey. From the first time Ash saw Ho-Oh in Episode 1, to its symbolic presence and ability to reignite Ash's passion after tough losses, Ho-Oh has always represented Ash's unwavering spirit and the endless adventure that lies ahead. Also, let's not forget the importance of Ho-Oh in the 20th movie, which reimagined Ash's origin story and allowed him a chance to battle Ho-Oh, something fans have waited decades for, even though we didn't see it, so that movie was a waste of time. And now that we've picked a legendary for each type, it's time to assemble Ash's ultimate legendary Pokemon team. First up are the legendaries Ash already has, Solgaleo and Melmetal. Sorry Naganoddle, but there's no way you're making this cut. You're too deep into Ultra Space to realistically return to Ash. While Naganoddle has come back temporarily, that was kinda random and made no sense. Meanwhile, Solgaleo had more consistent returns thanks to its ability to create Ultra Wormholes, so he can reach Ash wherever it may be. Next, we have the Latias Ash always deserved. Latias is a Pokemon that should have officially joined Ash at the end of Journeys. Their bond was so evident that it was emotionally painful not to have them team up officially. I see a therapist every week because of this. Latias brings versatility and grace to the team, fitting Ash's style pretty well. And who is Ash without an electric type? While Pikachu won't be on this team because he's not a legendary, we've got a perfect substitute, Tapu Koko. 
Tempo Coco was not only a rival to Pikachu, but also pushed Ash to his limits during their epic final battle in the Alola League. Now, let's talk about Karina. Although Ash hasn't actually met this legendary, if they did, I just know they'd be the best of friends and have a shared love for sandwiches. Plus, even if it hasn't happened, Coridon is still a fantastic pick thanks to its representation in the games, making it really easy to picture what it'd be like if he was with Ash. And if you're having trouble visualizing that, then just check out my Scarlet and Violet series. Finally, we end with the legendary that began it all, Ho-Oh. As the embodiment of Ash's entire Pokemon journey, Ho-Oh symbolizes hope, perseverance, and the never-ending adventure that defines Ash. If Ash were to pull up with this team of Pokemon, no one, not even Tobias, would stand in his way. Tell him it's time to run it back.